Hello, friend. My name is David Halbrook. Thank you for sharing a few minutes to hear a few words of truth and reason. That's how the Apostle Paul described the gospel of Christ, words of truth and reason in Acts chapter 26, verse 25, and more about that later. But that's what we call this program. The Chena Small Tracks Church of Christ in Fairbanks shares these words of truth and reason with you in the hope that you will walk in the truth, that you'll be persuaded to walk in Jesus Christ. What would you think of someone who denied any real difference between left and right, red and green stoplights, people and rocks? You, you would know that they were ignoring or ignorant of some truth and reason. Or what if you had no way to distinguish truth from error? Would you even leave your home if you could not distinguish between left and right, red stoplights and green lights and, and people and rocks? Of course, distinguishing and identifying these truths are essential for daily life. And just as real as left and right and red and green lights and people and rocks are, so also is God and Satan, life and death, truth and error. And while some people deny the reality of these and other people don't know how to distinguish between these, God has spoken words of truth and reason for our benefit. Now, let me take you back to Paul and his for use of that phrase, words of truth and reason. You can read more about this in Acts chapter 26. But around 2,000 years ago in Caesarea, there was a Roman governor named Festus, and he was listening to Paul explain how he had once killed Christians, but how now he himself was spreading the gospel of Christ on the basis of the prophets and on the basis of Jesus' resurrection. Well, Festus thought that that was crazy, and he told Paul so. He said, but much learning has made you mad. And can, can you just picture this? Festus is obviously very agitated. And Paul's calm reply was, I'm not mad, that means crazy, most noble Festus, but speak the words of truth and reason. Boy, Paul diffused Festus' wild accusations uh, by this calm but clear statement. And then he even pointed out that King Agrippa, uh, someone, a, a guest on that occasion whom Festus had invited, understood all these things that Paul was saying. And he affirmed that everybody who was there could understand the things that he was saying. You see, these words communicate that anyone can understand words of truth and reason. So think with me for a few minutes about why God called the gospel words of truth and reason. And that would also help you to see why this program is called words of truth and reason. We are offering the gospel a message that anyone can understand. Just think about it. Think about truth. We live in a world that requires us to consistently understand truth. If you live in the Alaskan interior, as I do, you have to understand your body's response to cold, and if you ignore that truth or you deny that truth, you are in serious danger. And this is what Paul was explaining in that Caesarean courtroom, that what he was telling them about his past life and about the words of the prophets and Jesus' resurrection was the truth. And so it was essential for Festus to understand and Agrippa to accept and for everyone who was there not to ignore and not to deny words of truth. This is the appeal that we are making in this radio program. It, this idea of truth, of course, is not original with us. Truth is from God. The, we learn that from Genesis to Revelation, but especially look at the book of Psalms sometime and read and look for the theme of devoting our lives to a God whose character is truth. Psalm 25 and verse 5 says, Lead me in your truth and teach me. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Psalm 43 verse 3. The entirety of your word is truth. Psalm 119 verse 160. Who can you depend on to tell you the truth 
all of the time. I, I suppose we've all been disappointed by people we trusted who did not tell us the truth. We've learned there's no political leader, there's no website or news channel, and there's not even any earthly religious leader upon whom we can always depend. You can only completely rely upon God for the truth. We see the consequences of those who do not do so in our society, believing the lie that truth is irrelevant or unknowable or it can only be known by by the experts. It seems there are regular headlines about someone's so-called gender change or a transgender program being offered by a school or even a library. How often do you see the bumper sticker, Coexist? which suggests suggests that all religions are equally valid, or some people would say they're all equally invalid. What do you believe? Some religious groups even elevate a mere man to the point that no one questions what he says or what he does. The problem that all of these share is the truth is being suppressed. And when the truth is suppressed, a lie is going to replace it. And what help, what good do lies offer? N-O-N-E, none. You want to be told the truth. You want to know the truth, don't you? And that is what God offers, words of truth and words of reason. Back to the Apostle Paul in that original statement. Remember, he was defending his speech as words of reason because he had just been called mad, crazy, by that Roman governor, Festus. So he simply emphasized his words were true. They were sober, serious, clear, understandable, reasonable, logical. Boy, we need to know that today. Many people today believe that the Bible is too complex, too ancient, too translated, or too strict to be understandable and to be acceptable when just the opposite is true. The Bible is words of reason. God even invites your question. Yes, God wants you to believe Him, but God wants your faith to be the result of investigation. And so look at the evidence for truth. God doesn't expect you just believe everyone who claims to tell you the truth. God expects you to investigate what He has said and to find out the truth that is there. Here are some things that that the New Testament says. When you read you may understand. That's an invitation to investigate and to understand. Ephesians 3, verse 4. In Romans 10, in verse 17, faith comes by hearing. There's few things just, or many things, just as natural as that. You come to believe something as the result of hearing, of learning about it. Peter said, we have the prophetic word confirmed. He's reminding us there is evidence that is available Look at what the prophets said, and then look at the fulfillment of their words. Paul went on to say in Acts chapter 26 that this thing was not done in a corner. So he's explaining there are many people who have witnessed this. You can go talk to them, and you can learn from them yourself. Peter said in 2 Peter 1 verse 16, we are eyewitnesses. Again, that, that's inviting investigation. John says in John 20, verse 30, these signs are written that you might believe. So he doesn't say, just believe on the basis of of hearing me, but look at what is written and look at the evidence that's there. And then Paul lays it out as plain as could be in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 14. If Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. We are of all men most pitiable. Those are words of reason. And so all of these reflect the fact that God invites you to investigate what He has said and what He has done in the pursuit of the truth. So what do you not understand? What, what is there that is unclear to you? Do, do you struggle with confidence that God exists or that the Bible is His Word? Well, there's evidence for that. Or is there some topic in the Bible that you don't understand? Or maybe it's just the twist and turns of life of life that have left you deflated, depressed, and confused, like Job. Whatever the, the source of doubt is for you, 
God offers sufficient understanding to uphold your confidence in Him. Now, we may not know everything that we want to know, but we can know. We can learn everything we need to know and how important it is that you see the difference in that. God desires all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. We may not have an understanding of of everything, of why life twists and turns as it does. The book of Ecclesiastes explores that reality. But we can come to a knowledge of the truth. And what might be the greatest challenge of words of truth and reason is whether you will use them to examine yourself. Will you use words of truth and reason to examine what you have said and done in your past and what you are saying and doing in your present? What difference will these words make in your mind and your priorities and in your decisions? For example, if words of truth and reason show you that pornography is a sin, then will you leave it? If this message convinces you that you are lost in sin, Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Will you follow His instruction? What will you do with these words of truth and reason? Well, thank you for letting me join you today, whether in your car or your home or wherever you are. I realize we all are busy and have different ways that we choose to use our time. Thank you for sharing a few minutes with me. I want you to know that you will never hear a request for a financial donation on this program. What we want is to meet you, to listen to you, to talk with you about the kinds of things that you'll hear on this program. I I would love to meet you somewhere around Fairbanks or North Pole. Here's what you hear what is on your mind and open the Bible together. If you'd like to do some of that on your own uh, at our website www.chinachurch.com you'll find video and audio recordings on topics like God, science, and you, love and religion. And there's also a lesson, I'm not familiar with the Church of Christ. If you've never visited us before and you would like to know a little bit more uh, about the Church of Christ, then get a Bible and, and listen to that lesson. Also, there is a series of short, very basic videos They're also called Words of Truth and Reason, and they deal with very basic topics like what is truth? Does absolute truth exist? Uh, How can I be confident that uh, Jesus lived and and in his resurrection? And you can find that on our website, or we have a YouTube channel. If you search for Chena Small Tracks Church of Christ, there you can find us. And we're also on Facebook. And of course, you can come visit us. We meet at 5033 China Small Tracks Road in Fairbanks. That's about one mile from UAF off of China Pump Road. Uh, We meet on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. for age-divided Bible classes from the very young and all ages ages up. And then we have a general assembly at 10.30 a.m. and then that evening at 5.30 p.m. We also meet on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Uh, primarily a time of age-divided study. Again, you can find us at our our website, chinachurch.com, or you can search for the China Small Tracks Church of Christ on Facebook, YouTube. You can email us at chinachurch at gmail.com. You can even text us if on your phone you send a text to chinachurch at gmail.com. It will come through from your text to our email, and we can correspond that way. Ask any Bible question, uh, whether it's on the topic that you've heard today or some other topic. You could also call us at 907-479-6170. That's the office number, and you can leave a message there, and we will do our best to get back in contact with you. Well, join us each Tuesday and Thursday at 3.30 p.m. for a few more Words of Truth and Reason.